Hey game devs, Jason here. A couple days ago I made a video about scriptable object singletons showing how you can use them for game settings. And in my scenario, I needed to get a project ID that's only available at editor time, but I needed to store that off and have it available at runtime. I also showed how you could put in a couple other fields there to make variables that might affect your entire game, like a critical hit percent, or maybe in your game it's health. But there were a couple comments that came up really quickly about the fact that scriptable objects don't save between sessions. If you start up a game, make some change to that data, and then close your game out and then start it up again, it's going to go right back to the original version, and that's as intended. But what if you want to have something that saves off at runtime, like a volume slider or a resolution selection? Well, that's easy too. Let me show you a simple script that you can use to make that happen. Here I've got a game option script and it's a public static class. You can see I've only got one option in it right now. I wanted to keep this as simple as possible for the example. It's got a volume and then down below on line eight, it has a load method that's a public static method as well. It reads the volume from player prefs and player prefs are stored locally on whatever device you're running on. So if you're running on Windows, they get stored off in the registry if they're on Android, there's a folder for that. On iOS, they go to a special folder. Even on WebGL, they'll get stored off in Chrome's cache or whichever browser you're using. They work great for small or medium sized amounts of data, like game options for things like volume, resolution, or sometimes even simple game save data. Larger game saves require a more complicated system, not that much more complicated. If you wanna see that, drop a comment down below and I'll make sure to make a quick video about that. Let's continue on though. So we have a load method that grabs the volume from the volume key of our player prefs. And then if it doesn't find a volume, if we haven't ever set one before, it'll return back one, the default value, which is going to be all the way up on our slider. Next, we have a save method down here on line 13 that's public. And you can see it gets called from one place. It's got one usage. If I actually just click on that, I can go find that usage and find one of our two other scripts that make this all work. There's a UI volume slider. And this one I've attached to a volume slider or a slider object that came from the GUI fantasy RPG pack on the asset store. This is actually in that uh, Year of the Dragon lunar bundle sale where everything's, I think it's 97% off. I'll put a link for that in the description too. But all I've done is take that slider and add this UI volume slider script to it no other changes. Let's go take a look at what the script does. In the awake method, we grab a reference to that slider object just so that we can set the value to whatever our current game options volume is. And remember, this is gonna get set automatically before scenes loaded. So it's gonna get loaded from our player preferences because of our runtime initialize on load method. I mean, we have options for when this should run. I think before scene load is the right time for this. So we're gonna set the value of the slider to whatever our last value was or one, and then we're gonna register for the on value changed and add a listener to call this method down here on line 16 named on value changed. We're gonna get the new value, it defaults to the name arg0, I just renamed it. And when we get our new value, we'll set the volume and save it. So the last thing that we need is just something to hook this up. And for that, I've made a music player script. This music player script grabs the audio source from the same game object. And then in the update method, it sets the volume of the audio source to our game objects or game options volume. Let's go take a look at that and talk really briefly about how this could be optimized a little bit more. So here's that music player. It's got the audio source. You can see that volume going up as I slide my slider up. And that's because of the script down here. Let's mute that so that we can continue talking. So the, the last thing I wanted to mention is that while I'm doing this in the update, you could optionally just have some event that fires off when the volume changes and then adjust things like that. If you've got options that you need to, I think maybe think more performant about, you can always add in some events and then make it so that instead of setting the volume directly on here, perhaps you're calling a set volume method that then can fire off a volume change or whatever. So the things that care about the volume changing can fire off. And don't forget, you can add as many different things here as you want. You can have all kinds of different properties. Make sure that everything's static. Make sure that you have this method here or something else calling to load in your settings. I think that the runtime initialize on load works pretty good at that. And then um, finally, 
don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and let me know if you want to see other details or other types of videos on this kind of stuff. There are other ways that you can save this off. Like I said, I'm probably do a full video about that if people are interested as well. And maybe get into how you can save off larger scale data. It's something that we do often in a lot of the coursework. So it might be a fun video too, maybe saving off different players and, and things like that. All right. See you in the next video. Bye.